so much. Can we appreciate Mama for who she is and the gift that she is? The gift that Mama is to us, can we appreciate her before the Lord? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to greet your neighbor to your right and to your left and tell them, this is a divine setup for you this week. Just tell them that. This is a divine setup for you this week. It has to be. It has to be a divine setup for each one of us this week. And it shall be. Come on, tell them. Even if they have an attitude, they came like that. Just look at them and tell them this is a divine setup for you this week. You know, and I... I'm very encouraged to know that each one of you have made it to this venue and that each one of you has found room to come to this place today. This is day one of the 2023 Faith Explosion Conference. Can we give Jesus a hand clap? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Can you imagine we, are, we have hit the 50% mark of the new year that we started the other day? You know, we, we have already taken, to, I think it's, to, is it tonight? Yeah, I think it's tonight. Tonight we are telling six months of the year, see you. You know, see you. Because they are gone. And they, tonight is going to usher us into the second half of the 2023, the year that the Lord has a covenant with each one of us, specifically that your neighbor can do nothing about. You know, tell your neighbor, you, don't, you cannot change or you, you cannot change what God has promised to do to me and through me and by me in 2023. That's the truth. It is the year of limitless possibilities. And the Lord is taking us beyond, beyond our expectations. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord this day one. Uh, people are trickling in and uh, Apostle Richard Mayanja, who is our keynote speaker in this conference, uh, is in town and you will shortly be here and you'll be able to give us the first taste of the message that the Lord has prepared for him. But I, I, as the convener of this conference and uh, being the headmaster of this school, my spirit and my heart is tuned to the spirit of faith. How many of you know that we have the gift of faith? Yeah, we have the confession of faith. We have, let me just, let me just outline them for you. We have, the, we have faith that everybody has. Each one of you did not check whether that seat is still there. Because you have what? Faith that there was a seat behind you and you knew it was there. And you just went back and sat on it. That you don't have to be a believer to have faith on a chair. That is the lowest level of faith, of the manifestation of faith. And it works. That is faith, universal faith that everybody has. This is a faith explosion conference and that's why I am saying what I'm saying because I want somebody to understand we are here for an impartation of faith. Yeah. And there's a reason why, there's a, there's a, I mean, there's a reason why it is placed in the sixth month of the year. You know, the last, the month that marks, let me not contradict myself, the month that lags the last half of the year, you know, June, Faith Explosion Conference, because what has not worked from January, February, March, April, May, June, is going to work for you if you have faith. For the, for the God, the God that we serve, and our God, our Father, and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, transacts business with one currency in his kingdom called faith. Universal faith. Then we have the gift of faith. 
And then that is when some of us, the Bible talks very clearly and puts it very clear and out of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit that are documented in First Corinthians, that there is faith as a gift. That is faith that is not with everybody. But there are people who don't just need to activate their faith as a gift and walk in it. There are others that are engulfed by the spirit of faith. You understand what I mean? The spirit of what? Faith. And each one of us here is qualified to move up a step higher than you were, than you have existed before. Your faith needs to go to another level. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I'm taking it higher. And this is what I want to quote as we talk about this. Uh, let me not give you a lecture on faith because I, uh, I will do that before the conference is over. But I want us to go to John chapter 11. Just give me John chapter 11. I'm not waiting for the apostle. I had purpose to start by this. Good to see all of you here. You know, I had purpose to start with this. John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Jesus is told... The one whom you love is sick. The one whom, I'm going to summarize the chapter, it's a long one, I can't just finish it all. He is told that the one whom you love is healed. He has fallen sick, that is verse 3. Give me verse 3 so that we can begin there. Jesus is notified that the sister comes and says, you know, therefore the sister sent to him saying, Lord, beyond him who oh, you do what? You love is sick. Give me verse 4. I will summarize the whole chapter because I want to just bring a certain understanding. When Jesus heard that, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. And I've told people over and over because I like talking about faith. I am a product of faith. And that is why, and even you are a product of faith. And that's why in a ministry like this one, there has to be a conference whose theme is what? Faith. You know? I tell people, faith comes to you every time you hear. That's why it's very important for you to know what you are hearing, whether it can build faith or destroy the little that you have. Or the match that you have. Jesus is told in verse 3, he, the one whom you love is sick. He has heard it. And instead of Jesus rising up and saying, oh yeah, let's go heal him. The Bible says, when Jesus heard that, that the one he loved, Lazarus, is sick, what did he do? He says, this sickness is not an to death but for the glory of God that the son of God may be glorified through it I want us to stay there I want us to stay there before we move on I mean mother and Mary the sisters of Lazarus know that their brother is sick during break time in heaven I will ask Jesus a lot of questions and one of them will be verse 4. <laughs> Jesus says, I have heard you well. He is sick. But this one. Come on. Uh, this one. How many of you can tell when sickness is unto death and when sickness is not unto death? Jesus says, this one, <laughs> as much as you are troubled, is not what? Come on, let me... Read from that one so that we can read all of us. He says, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. That the Son of Man may be what? Son of God may be glorified through it. What glory can God get from sickness? If you put your little understanding and my little, very little understanding, which is smaller than yours, you wonder, you feel like correcting Jesus. Jesus, are you not contradicting yourself? Sickness does not come from you. For, but you were wounded. Come on. You feel like correcting Jesus and telling him, Jesus, you were wounded for our transgressions 
and uh, you are bruised for our iniquity. Karibu sana. You are, you know, you are bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon you. And by your what? Come on. By your wounds we are healed. And now we report to you of a sickness for which you were striped for, and you received fright for, and you tell us this one is to bring you glory. I pray that that question will be under, under, answered in this Faith Explosion Conference, this 2023, that you need to understand all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. And even when the enemy has planned evil, I want you to expect the result to be different from what every other person believes who is not a child of God like you are. What the enemy intends for evil, God will do what? Come on. Will turn it around for good. Because Jesus was already, he took care of our sicknesses. He is the healer, it's, it's the healing itself. And he's told that your friend is sick. And the healer says, this sickness, E. This one is not unto death. <laughs> This chapter is very interesting. I want you to read it critically, not to finish it. And the man ends up dying. <laughs> Did he die? <laughs> and the man dies. So if you were a clean, uh, if you had uh, you, you are a person who looks at things critically, like some of us, would you not find fault with Jesus? Na mna Jesus akicha kweli. Ulisema hii sio yako dead. Lakini mjamaa amefanya nini? Songea Kiswahili hapa hakuna wazungu. Mjamaa amefanya nini akicha kweli? So if uh, Pastor Mary you had uh, testified and uh, took the word of Jesus that this sickness is not unto death and you had gone and published it on your Facebook wall. That brethren, as you pray for others, just know that the master has declared, <laughs> come on, <laughs> you know, to all the intercessory groups and to all the people that are, have heard that Lazarus is sick and they are, they are praying and fasting, you may as well eat because this sickness He's not unto death. And then the guy dies away. <laughs> he dies. Would you remove it from a wall? Would Pastor Mary be a liar? See, you heard it from Jesus, isn't it? This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. I just want you to know what we consider final is not final with God. What you can come on, if you want to give Jesus a club, you can do that. What we consider final is not final with God. Our God has no beginning and has no end. That's why Lazarus proceeds and does what people do when sickness overpowers them. What did he do? He died. But to Jesus, And that does not injure his reputation. Does not make him less the son of God. He says what you consider death to me is because, I, because he is the resurrection and the life itself. And what does the next verse say? Come on, let's read just the other one. He says, however, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he was speaking about taking <laughs> rest in sleep. It even confused his disciples who were with him. <laughs> because how would you defend Jesus when Lazarus dies? How would you tell brethren, don't worry, Benib is dead. They thought, what have you been thinking about the problem you are facing? What has your mind told you? What has your education told you? What has your experience told you? What does your family say? The apostle is here, but I, I'm in the middle of explaining something. Can I just continue and finish until he comes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mama, do the necessary. 
Let's turn our feet and welcome the apostle as he comes into the service. As he comes into the sanctuary. Yeah. Let's clap to Jesus for welcoming him as a welcome to Kenya. Let's welcome him. Let's welcome the apostle. I'll finish up what I was saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We want to thank God for him. He has to feel welcome to come to this service. He has to feel welcome to this service. Welcome Apostle to this year's conference. We are in the very beginning of it all. Yeah, let's just clap until he gets to his room and then I'll finish up what I'm saying. And I get out of your way. Karibu sana. Karibu. Karibu Apostle. Yeah. You can take your seats in the presence of the Lord. The next time I'm going to ask you to stand this when we are ushering the apostle into the meeting. Karibun sana. Now, they thought he was speaking about taking a rest. What is considered the end of the road for humanity is not the end of the road for your case is in the hands of God. Your case, no matter how tough it is, in the hands of God. And Jesus goes for all many days. We know the story very well. Let's finish up this quickly before the apostle comes. He goes, he, we say he ignored, but he never ignored. He acknowledged that Lazarus is dead, but he went for four days. And he came back on the fourth day. And he tells them to remove the stone. I don't want to preach beyond this point, but I just want you to prepare that each one of us, especially in this time that we are living in, in this country, where things are difficult, the economic downtown is challenging everybody. Business people don't understand what is going on. Even those that are employed, the government sometimes are not paying people. It is month the end, but that means that people are going to get their salaries in our country. There are some who have not been paid their May Sarali, and they are still working. Things are difficult and things are challenging. And, you know, we can say that we are living in the days of uncertainty, you know, when things are no longer just the way they are programmed. But has that changed the character of God? So as we gather in this Faith Explosion Conference in 2023, I want you to understand, your God is not perturbed. Your God is not inconvenienced by what inconveniences you. Your God is not even interrupted. He is not even frustrated by what frustrates you. And in these five days of Faith Explosion Conference, today is Wednesday night. We have tomorrow lunch hour. Meetings. The Apostle Richard Mayanja will be preaching in the lunch hour meeting tomorrow because it's part of the conference. I mean, not tomorrow, on Friday. We are, tomorrow we are meeting here. We have a free independent... Is it... No, I have always... I have... Most of my years, June finds me in the United States. So it, is my, it is when we got our independence, isn't it? So, so we... Tomorrow we have a holiday, but we'll come here in the evening to be blessed of the Lord. Amen. How many of you are ready for tomorrow night? The apostle will be here ministering to us. Then on Friday during the lunch of our meeting, and again in the evening in this same place. And on Saturday in the, in the after, from 4 p.m. in this same place. Sunday morning and Sunday grand finale. Those are several meetings that are packaged for the city of Thika, including those who have come out of the city, because I can see there are brethren here who have come from very far, as we will hear as the apostle preachers. I want you to understand it is is time for you to move slowly or fast if you can and remove the stones on top of the matter that you consider done. Whatever it is, that's what I want to bring you to. Ask the Lord to give you the, 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 the strength to move and remove the stone 
from the grave of something that you are buried or you consider dead because resurrection power is in this house. Amen. They even told the Lord, by this time he stinks. Jesus told them, go ahead and remove the what? Move the stone. And I want to ask you to do the same. Let's stand on our feet as we invite the apostle to come and minister to us. Gather courage, my sister. Karibu sana, apostle. Uh, la, come on, let's clap. Karibu, karibu sana. Karibu, karibu. Karibu, karibu. Karibu sana. Welcome. I want you to remain standing because the next thing I'm going to do is to invite the apostle to come and stand here. We are glad to have you here. Welcome to the 2023 Faith Explosion Conference. It is day one. And the first day, the Lord does special things. And I pray that, again, like I've just exalted you before, each one of you will find courage to remove the stone from a matter that you told is that close chapter in your life. Because in this June Faith Explosion Conference, there is resurrection power. Dreams will be resurrected. Visions will be resurrected. Yeah, dreams and visions will be resurrected. Things you considered close chapters, God is going to do it in this five days of mighty visitation. The Apostle Richard Mayanja from the Republic of Uganda is in our meetings. Do we love him? Can we welcome him now with a clap? Can we welcome him with a clap? He's in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. I want us to give a bigger shout and a clap to the God who uses Apostle Richard Mayanja. He deserves a bigger one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord of God. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the honor, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Jehovah God, for the gift that you have brought to us. We worship you and we give you praise. Hallelujah. And now, let's put our hands together as we welcome the only apostle, Richard Mayanja, from the Republic of Uganda to the altar today. Thank you. like a consuming fire. Come and take the keys of thicker. Move and touch lives. Let them, everyone who is not here, be arrested by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let something happen in the atmosphere of this region. So spacious, so supernatural. Let people know that there is a mighty visitation of God in the land. Now we dedicate this conference. May it be a meeting that turned our lives around permanently. Those who will attend this meeting, by the end of it, let them say, the Lord has spoken to me. Let them say the Lord has touched me. Let them say I have touched God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now may you take your place in our midst in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May you be seated on the head of your enemies. Bring everyone with you tomorrow. 
I've started like that. Thank you, Bishop, for inviting this black preacher to bless the city of Thika. Hallelujah. Happy New Year. <laughs> we last met last year, and I'm so glad that the Lord has preserved you. The Lord has kept you. And in this meeting, great things are going to happen. Carry everyone with you dead or alive. Make sure they come to this life-changing conference. Praise be to Jesus. Greetings from my powerful family. They love you. They are praying for us that the Lord will use me mightily. Can we clap for Bishop and Mama for keeping this house of God? Amen. You know, one of the things you've got to study as a Christian is called stewardship. Stewardship. When we go to heaven, we are going to be rewarded by how we were faithful in that which the Lord had entrusted to us. Now that scares me every time I stand to minister because I'm going to give an account for every word that I spoke. And that is why I preach the way I preach because I want to wash my hands to tell you that I didn't hesitate to give you the whole counsel of God. Whatever I feel in my spirit, that that is what the Lord wants us to know, I pour it out. Because when I appear before the master, I want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. How are you, Reverend Kamau? I've not seen you a long time. And this man, hi, God bless you. Look at how beautiful these ones are looking. Comfortable. Hey, I like that sitting. You all, you look like you're in heaven. <laughs> Praise God. I'm going to take you through a journey. I'll teach nothing until Sunday morning. I'll be on this message. Apart from the evening when I'll be coming to kill some things. <laughs> I love that. Praise God. So we are going to learn some serious things, huh? Some serious things. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 14. The Bible says. It says. For as many are laid by the spirit of God. These are the sons of God. It's an amazing scripture. You are not a son of God if you are not led. It's like just because you are born again, you don't qualify to be. But until you are led by this Holy Spirit, then you are called a son of God. I'm about to introduce my subject. That's why in most of my meetings, I like inviting the Holy Spirit. One time the Holy Spirit spoke to me that when Jesus will be coming, he's not coming for me. I used to preach that he's coming for me. He told me he's coming for the Holy Spirit. I'm like, okay. 
And now what, was, what is going to happen to me? The Lord, the Holy Spirit told me, your relationship with me is what will determine whether when he comes for me, I go with you. <laughs> Are you listening to that? When the Holy Spirit, because when the Lord will stand in the clouds, it will be the end of the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. So as the Holy Spirit is going up, when you have him in you, you will be magnetized to the Lord of glory. That's why it is important, the most important thing you should do now is to cultivate a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit. That should be your job number one from now. So this week, I'm going to teach you 10 habits to boost your spirituality. Ten habits. Whatever you practice, you become. Whatever you practice, you become. Your habits started as actions. Now they are habits. Amen. Habits. I want to leave this place more spiritual than the way I found it. People no longer want to be spiritual. It's, it's amazing. Uh, most of the time when I'm not doing ministry, I'm very casual that you can actually bypass me. I'm too casual. Boy, I'm casual. Jeans, Cape. I, I, I camouflage until I'm so sure they don't know me. But I see people who I know, but they are not aware because they are used to preaching suits. The way they switch so fast from the spirit to the flesh buffers me. In this generation, people, people are not, they are not steadily. I mean, they, something small switches people. A person who was singing hallelujah, within two minutes, they can enter the flesh. And you are like, I can't believe this. This is the man who has been singing holy. <laughs> now look at how the flesh has taken over. That's why I came to teach you their habits that can put you on the cutting edge in spiritual matters. You know, when you become, when your spirit is strong, you can command anything and it can happen. Your problem is not money. Your problem is the strength of your spirit. You just look at the master. Tax collectors have come, they want their money. He's not even shaken. He just said, yeah, Peter, go to the sea. Go to the sea. The first fish you get, open its mouth. Get their money and give it to them. The guy is not even shaken. He's not shaken. I beseech you by the mercies of God. Feed your spirit. Feed your spirit. We are in perilous times. We are in the last of the last days. Just feed your heart. Feed your spirit. With these habits, your children will be happy to call you their father. Hallelujah. It's important. 
I was telling my wife that you see, we, we can share everything, but there is one thing we don't share. Salvation. You get saved for yourself. I got saved for myself. We don't have common salvation. We don't share it. So I actually told her, if you see that what I'm saying to you, I'm telling you to do is out of the ways of God, don't accept just because I'm your husband. Because we don't share salvation. You have to follow your convictions. You see that? Follow your convictions. Don't die with me. <laughs> follow your convictions. Praise be to God. I told her, that's why Jesus said that two men, two people will be on one bed. One will be taken. One will be left. There's nothing like corporate salvation. <laughs> two men will be in the field. One will be taken. One will be left. This thing is personal. It is personal. It is not corporate. It's personal. <laughs> Bishop is your pastor, but he didn't get saved for you. That is something that is amazing. If Jesus appeared now, everyone on their own, the best he can do for you is to teach you the word of God, to prepare you for the Lord. But he cannot take you to heaven. It is your decision that will make you go to heaven. You cannot say, just because I'm in a powerful church, I have the ticket to heaven after here. Uh, uh, yeah. You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. This thing is personal. Okay? Isaiah 56, verse 9 to 10. Verse 9 to 11. Verse 9 to 11. Then I, uh, uh, we, we, I give you habit number one. All you beasts. Are you hearing that? Come to devour all you beasts of the forest. Verse 10. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot back. Sleeping. Lying down. Loving to slumber. Yes, they are greedy dogs which never have enough. They are shepherds who cannot understand. Uh, they all look their own, to their own way. Everyone for his own gain. From his own territory. It says all you beasts come and eat. Because the men who are supposed to be watchmen. They are lying down. Sleeping, loving to slumber. Habit number one. The first habit is crucial. Every day, someone say every day, spend time with God in the morning. Every day. Every day, spend time. With the Lord in the morning. Before the beasts devour your destiny. Love to spend time alone. With God in the morning. Morning begins from midnight. Okay. Midnight. I prefer you do it early. Register your presence. Before the Lord very early in the morning. You are going to see something here. In Psalm chapter 5 verse 2. Psalm chapter 5 verse 2. Give heed to the voice of my cry, my king. 
my God. For to you I will pray. Verse 3. My voice, read it with me. My voice, he has taken my scripture here. What is wrong with you now? Can we read it together? My voice you shall hear in the morning. In the morning, I will direct to you it to you and I will look up. Let's read that verse again. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning, I will direct it to you and I will look up. First things first. It is a good habit. Learn to stand in the presence of God very early in the morning. Very early in the morning. Let God be the first person you talk to. Very early in the morning. It's an amazing habit. When you start with God, you finish with God. Don't wait until nine o'clock and you think you are going to talk to God. When you have addressed everybody. In the morning, I will direct my voice to you. First person to hear you should be God. If you practice that, you will see how things will move smoothly in your life. Cultivate this principle. You will see how far you will go. People who make sense in this kingdom understand the secret of early rising. Everyone who makes sense they understand the secret of early rising. My mentor sleeps, gets to bed at around uh, maybe eight o'clock because all night he loves being with the Lord. I think that's where I took it from. My body adjusting when I, like I'm doing ministry here, adjusting becomes a problem for me. Because I don't like sleeping at night. I don't. And most of the time I'm awake at night. I want to register my presence before the Lord. Somebody is going to be deep this week. Somebody is going to be very spiritual. Very spiritual. That's my, my assignment this week. You know, Bishop, the Lord told me something. As uh, about two, three years ago, he told me, I want you to start teaching things people no longer talk about. I said, Lord, like what? He said, like holiness. Like fearing me. I want you to start teaching such things. Walking with me. We are so diverted. Eh? If, I'm sure if the Lord is to come today. The world will be shocked. They will know that Jesus came. But they will be shocked by how many believers were left behind. Why? Because there are things we like hearing. Most of the things we love to hear, they are not bringing us into a close relationship with God. When you have him, you have everything. I've practiced this. There is nothing. I'm not a poor man. I'm not a struggler. I have some things. I'm not Bill Gates, but I have some things. But I want to say to you, there's nothing I have on this earth that has me. I have them 
they don't have me. Tell your neighbor that one, that my new neighbor, have things. Don't allow things to have you. Because I know that where your heart is, that's where your, where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. I have never put my trust on any earthly thing. And again, COVID also taught me, took me deeper. I was telling my wife the other day that COVID has really reduced us to zero. Look at how we are just wiping dust on our crocodile leather shoes. They are going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> They are going nowhere. Cars were going nowhere. Everything stood still. The poor and the rich, they looked alike. <laughs> are you listening to me? I saw how COVID reduced us. And I went deeper into this thing. We need to have things. <laughs> I used to see on the TV mechanics would come and teach us on how to maintain our cars that are not moving. Every morning, start the car. Do they? <laughs> God was looking from heaven and is like, have you seen me? In one month, the entire world stood still. May you have things don't allow things to have you. Have money. Don't allow money to have you. So that when the king of glory shows up, you'll be able to fly away. But some people will be found overloaded. They will be heavy. Jesus wants to take them. They are carrying a lot of things on this earth. Don't allow anything to have the center of your heart. Amen. Very early in the morning, appear before God. Appear before God. Show him that he's the only one on this earth you trust. Your trust in is in the Lord. I have this confession I usually make in the morning. I usually say, I trust in the Lord with all my heart. I do not lean on my own understanding. In all my ways, I acknowledge him. And he's going to direct my path. I commit my way also unto the Lord. And he will bring it to pass. Such a confession has kept me. I trust, I don't lean on my own understanding. Don't try to figure it out. I like the message Bible. I don't know what it said on my verse that I read. Can you register message Bible here? They are still talking about habits. They are happy. Eh? They are happy. The verse I read of Psalm 5, verse 2 to 3. From the message Bible. Verse 2. Huh? My groans and cries. Today you are in heaven. Eh? <laughs> Let's read it again. My groans and cries. King God, I need your help. Verse 3. Every morning you will hear me at it again. Every morning. I lay out the pieces of my life on your altar and watch for fire to descend. Woo! What message Bible is trying to tell us is that every morning present yourself as a sacrifice. Appear, present yourself on the altar of God as the sacrifice waiting for the fire to descend. 
Okay. Psalm 63. These are many verses. From verse 1 to 11, you get used to apostolic teaching. We read many verses. We don't read stanzas. They are, today these guys are fighting me, but don't worry. Let us read together. Oh God, you are my God. Ali. Let's read it again. Oh God, you are my God. Ali will I seek you. Where? My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Verse 2. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power. Verse 3. Because of your loving kindness is better than life. Are you seeing that now? Let us read it again. Because... Your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Continue. He has gone off. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied with the marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate in my... Somebody read that verse again. When in the night watches... In the night watches. That means God is expecting us to be active at night. Amen. Night watches. Night watches. Somebody is receiving the, the spirit of waiting upon God at night. Because you have been my help. Therefore. Mm. Which verse is that? My soul follows close behind you. Your right, your right hand does what? Good. Nine. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go in the lower parts of the earth. Right there. Go back. Go back. Let's read that verse again. You cannot die cheaply when you rise early. He started by saying, Oh Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you. When you seek God in the night watches, every evil plot against you has to fail. It must fail. They will look for you. They will not find you. It, it has to fail. That's why you find people, you have tr people have tried to kill. They even confess, we have tried to do this. And they have failed. They have failed because there is a, a habit this man is practicing. Verse, nine, verse 10. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion. That is what happens when you learn to stand before God. Ali, your enemies will be a portion for jackals. This one is moving you from prayer line. Looking for somebody to lay hands on you. You will learn to stand in his presence. Ali. Early in the morning. This your children should learn from you. My daughter, when she's going to, she's picked quite early. But Amori, she hears me praying. Then I come out. 
I just lay hands on her, I bless her, I continue praying. Then the other day she said, I also want to be like you. I was very happy to hear that. I, I was very happy to hear that. That she's seeing that there is something this guy is doing that is unique. Let your children know that they have a parent who stands before God early. That way they will know that you depend on God. You don't depend on the finger of man. Verse 11. But a king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory. But the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Not even a single accusation can prevail on a man who can stand before God early in the morning. You want to stop the lips of evil men? Learn to stand before God. That was the habit of the patriarchs. They were early raises. Most of the sacrifices were made in these two hours very early or in the evening morning sacrifice evening sacrifice why is it that God blesses this man who wakes up early it is because at a time when you are supposed to sleep you are standing before God God looks at it as a sacrifice when everyone is sleeping, you are awake. You have to be rewarded by God because he sees it as a sacrifice. It is a sacrifice. Somebody's house is going to change from tonight. Learn to stand. At least put you, let the alarm wake you up by midnight. When the day is breaking, offer your first fruits. At midnight, it's an amazing time. Whatever you speak at midnight, heaven looks at it as first fruits. When you worship at midnight, you have offered your first fruits of the day. Give God the first hours of the day. You will see what will happen to your children. They can't fail in this life. Because they have a father. They have a mother who stands before God. Ali. They love me in Thika, don't they? <laughs> Praise God. Let me give you another scripture. Psalm 143. One forty three verse eight to ten. Eight to ten. Cause me, can we read it together? Sweet words. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. Read that word again. Cause me. Read it again. For in you, cause me to know the way in which I should walk. If I lift up my soul to you. You can only make such a prayer very early in the morning. Teach me how I'm going to go about this day. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. People say, I love my sleep. People say, I love my sleep. Okay, we shall see. Now you want to quote a verse to me. I know. He gives sleep. <laughs> he gives sleep. Okay. We shall see. <laughs> okay. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. In you I take shelter. Teach me to do your will. For you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. 
This is David praying. Cause me to know your loving kindness in the morning. I want you to understand this. There are certain things that only happen in the morning according to the calendar of God. Let me say that again. There are certain things that only happen in the morning according to the calendar of God. If you don't master your morning, And the bishop told me uh, that, you know, I like reminding you things you tell me uh, that, that make me feel sweet. He told me, I don't know, I called and he told me, you know, I, I, I usually wake up very early. I was in prayer. I said, now we can work. I think now with this one we can work. I like like-minded people. I have preachers who invite you and you. Uh, like you go back <laughs> they are too fleshy from the invitation the invitation is fleshy everything is fleshy <laughs> they are too fleshy huh? there are things that only happen <laughs> well I'm going to read you scriptures I don't dare live here and give me a few minutes. There are things. Bishop, let me say this to you. All my messages that I preach, they come to me late at night. 99.9%. Messages come to me between, I've, re, I've seen this, between midnight, one o'clock, Two o'clock, three o'clock, up to four. Most of them. Most of them. In fact, I've learned a lesson to keep notebooks around me. Because the one I look at is the one I pick and I start writing what the Spirit is teaching me. There are things that only happen while it is still dark. <laughs> oh! May God help you to understand what I'm teaching you. There are revelations that God only releases when there is less activity on us. He dispatches an angel. Take this word to this person. Take this one to this person. All my messages come at that time. I don't remember the last time God gave me a message at four in the evening. I don't remember one. Not even one. Master that habit. Standing before God early in the morning. Look at this one for free. Which one did we read? Psalm 143. Correct? Now let us look at Lamentations. Chapter 3. I know you look at verse 20. Oh, let's read. Uh, okay. My soul still remembers and sinks within me. Continue. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. Through your mercies. That which verse is that? 22. Okay. Verse 23. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The mercies of God, they are not new every evening. They are new every morning. One time the Lord told me that yesterday's mercy is not good for today. Why you have to stand before me every day early in the morning so that you collect the masses for that day? Because his masses are new every morning. 
Somebody is still standing on the masses of 2020 during COVID. No wonder you struggle. The masses of God are new every morning. If at least you don't want to wake up early, may this scripture make you wake up early. So that you rise and go and collect the masses for your family. You can even say, I'm collecting the masses for my children, masses for my ministry. Are you listening to me? You can even help Kenya and collect the new masses for Kenya. Stand in his presence to pick your new masses. This scripture just registers one thing. The masses of yesterday, they are not good for today. His mercies are new every morning. What did verse 20 say? Can we read it up to verse 23? Flowing faster. Verse 20. Give me verse 20 there. It's still, they love verse 23. My soul still remembers and sinks within me. There's something he has remembered. Amen. Verse 21, this I call to my mind, therefore I have hope. Though the Lord is, eh, through the Lord is mercies, we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. 23, they are new every morning. Great is thy faith. A preacher should collect the new masses for the ministry on a daily basis. A father should stand before God and say, I stand as the head of this house and I have come for the masses the angels have released in the morning. I said certain things according to the realm of the spirit, they happen in the morning. His masses are not new every midday. They will not be new. So now you can imagine who us who cry for mercy at two o'clock in the afternoon. The angels will be like, come on, be serious. <laughs> at this moment, we are handling something different. As for masses, we release them, we deliver them in the morning. So don't waste your time going around the church corners. Oh, cry, have mercy on me, Lord. Shut up. Wake up very early in the morning and go and collect the masses in Jesus' name. How many of you will practice that? Collecting masses. Now you can imagine what you missed today. I don't know the masses for today. Some of us, when you look at that scripture, it simply tells you, you are supposed not to be where you are now. You've not been collecting masses since you got born again. You've been crying at the wrong time. His masses are only new. Not at, at 11. New every morning. Stand before God. Very early. Now, I think that is what people like Abraham knew. Abraham was an early riser. That is what the Lord knew. Masses are new every morning. Don't quote that scripture to God at one o'clock. You angels will slap you. Psalm 30 verse 5. Quickly, please. Let us read together. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Not in the afternoon. In the morning. How many of you want to receive joy? It is collected in the morning. It is in the morning. You miss it. You have missed everything. 
Joy comes. It doesn't come like now it is not going to come. It came in the morning. <laughs> if you missed it in the morning, forget about it. Joy only comes in the morning. May you rejoice in the morning. Okay. Which habit are we discussing, by the way? What was the habit? Eh? Spending time, always spending time with God in the morning. Quality time. You don't look at your phone when you are spending time with God. Put it in silence. So that you will see who tried to call after you have done your devotion. You were with God. You are alone with God. If in my house, if you want to see me mad, you know mad? And you see that the apostle has lost it. Knock at the door when you are hearing me pray. I will teach you a lesson. That your mother never taught you. <laughs> I'm talking to the chief. And master. All focus. Is on him. All focus is on him. I'm attentive to what he's about to say. Praise God. Psalms 70, 90, verse 14. Psalm 90, verse 14. Why don't you leave these notes? Let us read together. Come on at the top of your voice. Oh, satisfy me early with your mercy that we may rejoice. Read out verse again. Oh, satisfy us early. Huh? Read it again. Oh, satisfy us early with your mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Early. Satisfaction of mercy happens early in the morning. All the patriarchs, you take a, uh, uh, you go on, uh, out and sit down alone with your Bible and study the characters of the Bible. All the patriarchs, all the generals, all the prophets, they knew how to stand before God early. Early. Look at this wonderful scripture. It's wonderful scripture. Mark chapter 1, verse 35 to 39. Now, read with me. Now in the morning, having risen a while, a long while before daylight, he went out. And departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. Who is praying here? Jesus. Now he's the man you call my Lord. Look at how, look at his habit. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And there. The one who came from heaven is praying. The ones who came from nowhere, they are not praying. Seriously. You would have expected Jesus to come and say, man, I'm Jesus. Eh? Bulldozing everything. Eh? The man, while it is still dark, he isolates himself to a solitary place. And there he prayed. The following verse says, 
And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. And that's what we are saying nowadays. We are seeing nowadays. People don't want to stand before God. They want to search for those who are standing before God. Huh? <laughs> they don't want to stand before God. They searched for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is looking for you. <laughs> everyone is looking for you. Let me say this. Let me give you a revelation here of free of church. They say to him, everyone is looking for you. He's not the one looking for them. They are looking for him. That even his disciples are searching for him. The power to magnetize everyone and everything is when you rise up early and go to a solitary place and talk to the boss, God of heaven. When you do that, they will not, you will not look for people. They will look for you. Everyone is looking for you. If everyone is looking for you, then everything is looking for you. You don't need to try to move people to do things for you. Move God. Everything will start looking for you. Everyone is looking for you. Have you captured that statement? When he finished, they came to him. The disciples are searching. And then the words are like this. Everyone is looking for you. The power to magnetize things is when you stand before God while it is still dark. Now, Jesus has just defined for us what is called morning. It should be when it is still dark. Jesus does not pray during the day. He understood he is God. He came from heaven. He's everything. He's the word of God. He understood how the calendar of God works. That certain things only happen when it is still dark. I'm reading two scriptures so that you go home and start functioning. Psalm 119, verse 145, 47 to 148. Read with me. I rise before the dawning of the morning and cry for help. I hope in your word. Read it again. I rise before the dawning of the morning. Mm. That means the best time to cry for help. Eh? The best time to cry for help. Before the dawning of the morning. That is when you should go somewhere. Throw yourself everywhere. And talk to God, I need your help. The following verse says, My eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word. This is a king speaking. You are not a chief. Isn't that challenging? You are not even known where you stay. They don't even know you. But you are bragging, huh? The king. <laughs> Just imagine. The king is saying, my eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word. What do you need, David? What do you need? You know, whenever I study the life of King David, the secrets, I like studying the secrets of men. I, I've studied the secrets of Job and the secrets of King David. Those two, at least, I've mastered. 
But I'm not surprised that even when Jesus will come to reign on the earth, having studied the secrets of King David, when Jesus will come here for reign for a thousand years, King David will be ruling with him. He will be reigning with him. He will be in Jerusalem. I will relocate. I'll be living in Jerusalem. I don't want to see Jesus from far. You see that light? It is him. No, I want to be there. <laughs> I want to be there. I'm going to relocate. Jesus says, the Bible says, David, his kingdom is forever. God gave David an eternal kingdom. He's going to reign with the Lord when he shows up here. You don't ask yourself why. It is because you are sleeping. When the king takes off his throne and is standing before God in the night watches, that king should reign with Jesus when he comes back. But if you also want to reign in this life, copy such men, imitate such men. If a king is still awake at night, why are you sleeping? You have not bought a bicycle. Wake up! Why are you sleeping? Kings are awake. Seriously, kings are awake. They are talking to God late at night. Eh? We are sleeping. And you wake up at 11. And you put on your best song. Jesus is a mighty God. <laughs> Seriously. The God we serve is a God of timings. The God we serve is a God of seasons. There are things he does in particular seasons. You miss a season when certain things are supposed to happen, you are finished. The Bible is full of seasons. The Bible tells us why King David fell into sin it is because at a time when kings are supposed to go to war, he stayed at home. He missed a season and the devil took over the season. The final scripture I want to read for you is Luke chapter 22, verse 39 to 41. Your life must change. Coming out... Read with me. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives. As he was accustomed, are you hearing that? And, he, and his disciples followed him. Stay there, stay there before you give me another verse. Read it again. In other words, what this verse is saying to us is that it was Jesus' habit. This is how he lived his life. Men who cause impact in three and a half years, an impact that will last for 2,000 years, they don't sleep the way you sleep. Tell your new neighbor that my new neighbor, the people you admire, they don't sleep the way you sleep. The Jesus who caused such impact that we are still experiencing today was not a heavy sleeper. It was his habit. He has brought the amplified. And he came out and went as was his habit to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. What did the message Bible say? Because you are now flowing with me. <laughs> Living there, he went, as he so often did, to Mount Olives. And his disciples followed him. Give me King James, then we read the following verse. And he came out and he went as he walked. No, the new King James version that we started with. I want to go to the following verse. 
Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed, and his disciples followed him. The following verse says, when he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. Verse 41. Is there 41? 40 what? 41. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and he knelt down and prayed. This was Jesus' prayer I mean, prayer altar. Jesus never used to pray in houses. Trees with groanings. It was his habit. It was his custom. The Bible, one version says, while it was still dark, he went out to pray. While it was still dark. That is the God you serve. That is the Jesus you accepted. What made him have such a serious breakthrough on us is not sleeping. My eyes are heavy right now because since I came, I'm praying for you. Are you listening to me? I don't come. <laughs> Do you hear me? I don't, I'm, I don't believe I'm a preacher. I'm a messenger. When I come to a region, I must Capture the atmosphere. We finished a meeting where hundreds of people came at the end of Meru County where people were threatening to kill me. I told them, try it. I'm going to kill you in installments. <laughs> it was that bad. The police was involved. They, this year, up to Nairobi here, it was a major threat of, to my life. But we serve a God who sits on the skies. They didn't come. They promised me they would come on Sunday. I waited. I wanted to kill somebody on Sunday. Actually, one wrote on my wall and said, I'm coming on Sunday. And I answered him back, make sure you show up. Make sure you don't fail to show up. I wanted to make a lesson out of him. Some of us are firebrands. You cannot. Hi, Jesus of Nazareth. You can't. How, where, when? You can't. We don't sleep at night. We deal with forces. Clear ways. So when I tell you this week it is going to be a blessing to you, it is mere, more than a statement of faith. I know where it is coming from. I know where it is coming from. I'm leaving here, and again I'm, no, I'm going to stay awake. Don't call me very early in the morning. I'll be sleeping at around 8 there. Are you hearing me? We have to move some things. This is kingdom business. I release the grace. You are going to lose your sleep now. I, you are going to lose your sleep. I release the grace to be a watcher at night on your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Just listen to this one in one minute. When God called me to ministry, I slept outside for three years. Bishop, it was three years I'm sleeping in a bush. Day and night, I never had holidays. Whether it is raining, I used to come there. I didn't care. I had a watch, a jacket, and a torch. I would pray. And most of the things that I know about my ministry, I got to know them during that season. So after three years, I felt that the season for that place is over. Because developers started coming to my forest. I think I had opened the heaven. So I ran away. I said, now I'm going to stay in the houses. 
a jacket, I hanged it somewhere. One, <laughs> there was a, a woman who used to come and work for me. She was quite elderly. She asked me, uh, man of God, do you still need this jacket? I said, which one? That one. Then I asked her, do you need it? Yes. Now for her, she thought she's going to wear a nice jacket. I, I said, hey, where do you stay? I, she told me. Then I said, you can take it. She never slept in the house for four years. <laughs> four years. <laughs> four years. Don't ask preachers to give you their things. <laughs> for four years. Actually, it was so sweet that I made her my intercessor. <laughs> I said, every time, <laughs> oh, God is my witness. Every time I was going to preach, I would tell her, now, now that you are sleeping outside, I'm traveling. <laughs> you will be fasting. Going. <laughs> you will be fasting. Hey, don't just speak things you don't know where they're coming from. For her, she'll just love the jacket. She don't know the jacket is loaded. She slept outside. I'm releasing the grace. At least to watch at night. You may watch for 30 minutes, one hour, but at least start in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm talking to a congregation that will turn this city of Nairobi, Kiambu County, and Kenya upside down because they are going to start collecting. They are going to turn this city around in the name of Jesus. They are going to stand before God in the night watches in the name of Jesus. I release a mantle. I release a power. Can somebody open your, your voice and talk to God? I want to receive this thing, Lord. Help me to be a night watcher, night watcher, a man who collect masses in the morning, a night watcher. Touch me, touch my spirit, touch my body in a special way. Come on, take two or three minutes at least talking to God. Talk to God about this situation. May it become my habit. May it become my habit to stand before Jehovah God in the morning watches, in the night watches. May that grace, may that power, may that mantle, may that anointing come on me. Rose ke 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 bo sanda mama. Runda rika ri ho sika mama mama. Maros da ri bo sata kara mama mama mama. Manda rabo seke re bo sika mama mama. Rosa kanda rama mama 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 mama. Rose te ke re bo bo sata da baba. Manda rama mama mama. Spirit of laziness will break your power in the name of Jesus. You demons of procrastination will come against you in the mighty name of Jesus you are losing your hold of us in the name of Jesus you shall not prosper in Jesus mighty name Ricardo Risica Mando Rebo Seca Mama Randa Rabo Sika Baba Babo Rico Robo Sanda Rama Kata Baba I release a move in the name of Jesus Let there be a move in this country Starting from this altar Of those who are standing in the night watches before God Those who know how to stand and wage war In the night watches I release it I release a new wave I release a new move In the mighty name of Jesus Fire touches your life in Jesus name the power the tenacity the speed to seek Jehovah God is coming on somebody here in the mighty name of Jesus one more minute pray pray Revival is coming to your, to your house. 
Revival is coming to your house. Revival is happening in your ministries. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Homes who are standing before God. Oh, somebody is going to raise a voice before God in heaven. Voices are going to be heard in the heavenlies from midnight to five in the morning. Heaven will be bombarded by the prayers of the saints. People will be standing before God. Let there be revival in the homes of your servants. There be revival in the homes of your children, O God. Riko seke. Rande kete bo sakata baba. Zosikara mama mama ma. Ronda raba sikata baba baba. Rosete ke rebo sika mama mama. Ronda karebo sika raba baba. Ruka rama mama mama mama. Sita rama mama. Yando robo sekete ke rebo sika mama. Yuriando sikate rebo sande. Yurukata rio sekete ke. Marusi handi amo sika. Yikando robo sekete. Yurianda raba saka mama. We will fill our homes with prayer. In fill our ministries with a mighty wave of prayer. Rekete rebo saka. Marosika na rama mama. Risote rema mama mama. Lift your voice in a 50 seconds. Something is breaking off your family. It is breaking off your family. There is a wave coming to your house. A wave coming to your house. Jesus. 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 We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Rosaka baba baba santa baba baba. Rosata karama mama ma. Everything, lift up your ho- your hands now. Lift up your hands. Father, the Bible says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I make a prayer today on behalf of your saints. Touch their bodies. Touch the flesh. May the flesh be willing after this service. Because the spirit is willing already. Touch the bodies in Jesus name. Even the bodies that are sick, let them be healed in Jesus name. May this be a habit of standing before God. When everyone is sleeping. In Jesus name. It is done. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory to God. I see revival in your homes. I see revival. Your children will start waking up to pray. I see revival in your families. Your family altars called fire. In the name of Jesus. Let there be many testimonies after this message. In Jesus mighty name. Clap your hands to Jesus. One more time. Glory. By Sunday, someone will have a testimony out of this one habit. Sunday, this coming Sunday, there is a person who will testify that when I stood before God, he released a mercy on me that has opened this gate for me. 
may it be you that person i'm talking about somebody i feel it will testify i'll hear of a testimony out of this habit this coming sunday we will be talking testimonies in jesus name as you are standing in the presence of god just pick your bag and prepare an offering to give to god above all wisdom and all the ways of man You're here before the world began Above all powers Above all kings Above all nations The world has even known Above all things The treasures of the earth You here before the world began Crucified You laid behind a stone You laid to die Rejected and alone Like a rose Trumpet on the ground you took the floor and thought of me above all. Lift up your offering in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May your seed launch you into a new wave. I call this seed according to the word of God that seeds put on different bodies. May your seed be called revival in my family. After this giving, may the spirit of prayer in the night watches incubate not only you but your entire household. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be a visible change. That even the neighbors will notice. That heaven has located your home. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Come and give. If you are not giving via. Mpesa platform. Bring your offerings to the altar. Those of you who are giving through Mpesa. You can follow the procedure. There is an account here. This is family bank account. For checks. Checks are addressed to Destiny Ministries International. That is wonderful. There are those who are abroad, they can even, I usually receive money through a dream it. Uh, so we can, they are watching us. By the way, it is a good habit when you are watching on Facebook or to also participate in giving because you are getting blessed by this conference. Can we start moving forward? Crucify Laid behind a storm You live to die Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground Bishop, please You took the fall and thought of me I request that you don't leave so that we can pray and leave all of us together just if you give your offerings just go back to your seat we will finish we finish our meetings early so that everybody has time to uh, to be able to go thank you thank you let's give jesus a big hand clap for the good thing, things that he has done again i say let's give jesus a good hand clap thank you jesus oh uh, yeah i see some of some of the ashes are closing doors and others are opening so 
it's okay. Yeah, it's good to open them. Uh, it is a joy to have received the word for this season in 2023 from the servant of God that is teaching us on the beauty of waking up, up to pray in the morning. I can say I understand and I'm familiar with that because this is my year number 43, waking up at 3 a.m. to pray and uh, every, without using an alarm clock. And I know it means good to wake up and pray. When the Lord wakes you up to pray, when your mind is not full of things. Uh, I have done that for 43 years and I know it works. And may the Lord help each one of us to understand, number two, seek God for you. That's why people are dying in Shakahola because they thought somebody called Mackenzie can take them to heaven. It is your commitment to God, your personal relationship and commitment to God. And I, I, I sorry for quoting my example, but I, I'm not trying to say I'm better than you. No, you're better than me by far. But uh, it, there is a power that comes to you and an activation of faith that comes to you. And a belief, a firm belief that God is with me because you know you started it with him and he knows the way that you take. It doesn't matter how the day is, you know God is with me. And uh, we have received that activ activation and that blessing and may the Lord bless you and do you good. And, um, let me just say this as we pray. You can determine how the promises of God are activated in your personal life without even making posters, without even posting it on Facebook. You can have a walk with God at a personal level that becomes a fortress for you. That's why David said, the Lord is my shepherd. And because he is my shepherd, I shall not want. And he quoted several things that he does. And one of them is very deep. He says, even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are. That is not something you read from a book. That is something you experience. A reality where God has no choice but to support you. Daniel says, I will not eat the food that is offered to idols. He never copied another person. It's the conviction that he had in his heart. And when he was thrown into the lion's den later on with his, you know, when he was thrown into the lion's den or the, the four other guys, or the, the, the other brethren were, the other three brethren were put in the fire, they could stand and say, we will not bow to your image if our, even if our God doesn't do what? Doesn't deliver us. That's a confidence that you develop because of your personal investment or inventory in God. Let me not preach or try to preach. Uh, it has been preached. May you find grace. May you find grace. May I find grace to really develop a habit that makes God your personal friend and experience him at a personal level. Because when you experience God at a personal level, you are not easily moved. You can, stand, stand, you can stay standing when everybody is seated down. And you can stay seated down when everybody else is standing. And because you know how the story will end. Let's lift up our heart and let's pray. Jehovah God, we thank you for making it possible for us to come again to this place that we have made it a habit for over 10 years to come here in June to listen to the voice of, to your voice through the voice of your servant. We pray that God at this time, 2023, when the sender is no longer holding, that we'll be able to feel you closer than anything else and to feel this, how solid the ground is for we cannot sink on a rock and you have that rock. As the, your servant has declared the grace to wake up and pray and communicate with God with you at a personal level, I pray that each one of us will harvest that grace. And it will begin even now in the name of Jesus. And that has, it has been declared that by Sunday, each one of us will have a testimony 
You are a God who reveals himself to his people and to those who have made you their God. Bless us as we go home. We pray that you will give us journey masses, that you will protect us from the evil men and the evil women who think it is monthly and therefore they can get what they can harvest where they never planned it. We pray that our cars will be safe on the road. Those who are in tuk tuks and 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 uh, and border borders and bicycles and those who are walking God, because we are all living at different stages of life. I pray that God, you will protect each one of us. Our cell phones will not be snatched. Our handbags will not be snatched. Our wallets and our pockets will not be ransacked by evil men and evil women who will lay people because of the name of Manthiant. I pray that it shall be well with us. May your angels watch over us and may the Holy Spirit protect us from danger. And may the blood of the new covenant speak better things in our lives tonight. Bring us back here tomorrow, God. At five o'clock, we will remember to give you praise and to give you honor because you are the Lord our God. Renew the strength of your servant even as he goes to wait on you for the many days that he has to speak in this altar. Thank you. Give us the love to love enough, to love our brothers enough to invite them to come because you are speaking to your children and we are your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. Let's, let's appreciate the Lord. Let's appreciate the Lord. Uh, I see the front line here and a few seats behind there. I see some servants of God that have come. Let's appreciate and honor God for his servants that have come. Let's appreciate that he has come. Thank you so much, each one of you, for coming. May you also call other servants of God and tell them, uh, you will hear one word, if not two, that may change your life and ministry. See you tomorrow. Good night and God bless you. And a happy new month tomorrow morning. Thank you so much. Yeah.